no, uh, tables are broke, so they knew they knew not to mess with the big guns. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, I want to look for sort of like a mid state where there'll be some. Um, yeah. Uh, hopefully, still some recreationals right because that's kind of a mixture here so this is a nice one i hope so red line is a is a, a, a reg for sure of some sorts obviously it will be stereotypically if you're a 50s reg you're gonna have some slight more imbalances than a 250s plus reg uh, that's kind of just not in a mean way in terms of red line anything wrong but um yeah and then fan i don't know who fan is but uh, i would guess a, a random based on that and so hopefully a spade comes no now we're we're now just committed to playing heads up against a reg, ladies and gentlemen, but all right. <laughs> Fine. Hopefully, uh, this is what people were after. I guess we'll have a 50 here. She says, sometimes when I watch your high stakes, I have this feeling I know what to do, but then on my stakes, people do such crazy stuff that you sometimes don't know what to do. That is quite a common uh, uh, spot. Uh, it's for sure delusional at some point because in the long run everyone would prefer the freaks over the grounders. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like I know it can seem crazy like that, and you will, let's say, there will be spots where you're like, like it, you're just unsure. But typically, it's like you just you just way, way, way prefer randoms than than regs in your game. Always. Bon chance, says Guiv. Merci beaucoup, mon ami. Merci beaucoup. Bon chance, pour toi aussi. So, what do we think Breadline has here when he bets pig on the flop and then checks the turn? I don't think he's got too much Jack X. Or he might have some. I don't think he's got much 9X. That would be a bit of a weird bet on the flop. Could have a hand like Queen 10. Could have a hand like um, just a bluff at this point. Could have maybe a hand that's picked up clubs. Uh, we'll check. And I think check call seems quite sensible here. Uh, we can represent a lot of King Queen, Queen 10, King 10. Um, and so I hope he would bluff, uh, let's say, with his like 8 high and below or something like that. He checked Queen 8, so. Um, Okay, might be slightly, slightly under bluffing there, maybe, but uh, I think there's a lot of water folds you could expect to get in that spot. So, um, so we'll definitely bet again. This is a pretty happy spot, f I think, to triple barrel. Um, given I think a lot of two pair pluses are going to raise the turn. Uh, certainly flushes and straights at some frequency will want to raise turn here, given how deep we are. And so, therefore, uh, when it goes cool, cool. Uh, I think there'll be a lot of like 5-6, 5-8, 7-6, 7-8, 9-6, 9-8, Knights with a club, 5 with a club, 7 with a club, stuff like that. And I think all that play well. We could 3-bet this, we could also 3-bet to, I mean, you could go 1 third, you could 3-bet to 4.5, you can also just call. I think we'll call for the, keep the game interesting and deep stacked whilst we can, because it's quite rare, obviously, when we play ultras that we play these. Uh, not doing much on this flop, we're just going to fold. Spin Love says, "Okay, I know my questions are annoying. That is incorrect, Spin Love. You, your questions are not annoying. Your questions are very welcome, and uh, I appreciate them always. So never feel embarrassed about questions. Please ask as many as you ever would like to." Pocket Nines here. Uh, I'm going to read your question after this hand. So we're going to go a bit bigger with the ISO at 25 plus. Uh, it's typically uh, a spot I'll go a bit bigger. I'll go 4x here, um, and it's something you definitely want to think about as you're deeper stacked. Make sure your not ISOs uh, aren't too small. Can min race can limp? I think both are fine. We'll go for a limp, I think. Uh, given breadline is definitely three betting correctly, I would guess. Um, can check, can bet. I think we'll start with check. Again, one of these in between hands where, like, if we bet and get check raised, I think we just have to fold it, and it feels like a lot of equity to fold. Ace comes. It's a good card, but we want to be cautious about overbarreling this ace because everyone's going to check their value range on their ace, expecting us to barrel a lot. So, careful, but at the same time, yeah, we'll go for it. Okay. Uh, could jam this. Can also call. Let's start with a call. It's so that one of the reasons are when you compare EVs of calling and shoving, the uh, EVs of calling and shoving are close. And if a person is slightly under min raising, uh, min raise folding. The EV of calling kind of stays pretty static, but the EV of shoving 
very is, is a lot more elastic let's say so if a guy's opening too wide shoving gets better if a guy's opening too tight shoving gets worse calling stays pretty s similar and so when i'm deep stacked i actually don't take too many bluff shoves unless i know the guy's opening wide enough because population at least isn't opening in raising wide enough and so i think it's a bit of a mistake in my humble opinion to take lots of marginal gto-ish jams uh, that you'll see in solvers when you're super deep stacked i think you'd better served just flattening and then assessing and of course like some over realization perhaps on a side fours as well when we flat uh let's answer spin last question um what hands uh, do you like to open shoves more uh, bloody blind versus recreational on the big blind in ultras versus which hands do you min raise cool so um low pairs will definitely shove of course and in terms of min raise calling uh I mean, obviously, strong value and strong suited broadways would be a good bet. I'm assuming you mean at like 15 mid blinds, because at 8 mid blinds, I wouldn't. I mean, I'll still have a min raise with like aces, kings, queens, but I wouldn't really be min raising, calling anything unpaired, like ace, king, suited, I'd probably just jam uh, against the recreational, at least. Um, there's also, of course, room to limp as well, which is another tricky thing about uh, blind mid blind play as well. You can further complicate it by adding limps to your strategies, but. Um, to be honest, I, I try not to, against recreationals, have a very fixed strategy. I'm a very fluid and try and just I have a kind of generic idea uh, what I do against the population, readless, and to find out what I think you should do readless in the population, look at your population data. So on Party Poker, it's quite easy to go to PT4 and then look at your population stats. Um, you obviously don't have individuals because of the hand histories. But that's quite a nice way to do it and then that can be your new default and then from there you can then decide um, how do you think once you pick up information and that's where showdowns and, and being a bit of that poker detective can become really useful where you can then adjust from that accordingly but yeah uh, let's start with a check here with a 9-3 off against Mr. Breadline or Mrs. Breadline don't know which one not really a hand, we're comfortable. Uh, could fold here sometimes. Um, no, no, what's a good, like, what's a what's a comfortable cool cool card? Not many, but at the same time, he did give up the four. There is a lot of four and sixes in his range. I think we can call one. We also, he might have three, six, three, four, and that would check, check naturally. This is interesting seeing this three quarter. So like he's now saying he's got a two pair plus here and now it's quite tough. And I think the challenge here is a lot of his six, six and four X might feel compelled to barrel and bet. So if you've got a hand like, I mean, 10, four, 10, six would be bad. But if you've got a hand like eight, six or eight, four, uh, didn't call in time. Rambling away and I didn't press call. I wanted to call there. Maybe it's a good thing that we didn't, but maybe not. Who knows? It's easy to have a bluff there, though, because a lot of your your bluffs on the turn will feel like very natural bluffs on the river, and you won't have any strong reasons to discontinue them on that run out, I think. We have some perceived unpaired hands that are going to auto fold in our range. Uh, definitely going to hear back to straight draw, back to flush draw. We're going to be a bit quicker because of our stupid time bank, because I chat too much instead of making decisions. Eight's a good card for us. Um, he comes in a bet 1.8, so like he's saying he's got kings or a flush draw or something. I'm tempted to maybe click here and just see what happens because it's 3.75 to win 9. And so if he's ever bluffing, this is just incredibly plus EV. If he calls, do you want to click and jam? I don't think he does this very often with a king. So I think he might do this a lot with a flush draw. Um, so we could even go for like a, a half pot here uh, or even a block size. I think let's go for us blocks. Ah, stupid time bank. We would have worked it all. Ah, oh, it's frustrating because you can see like we were right there and then the blimmin' I chat too much. Twitch is annoying, isn't it? I would have won the hand if I wasn't, if it wasn't for the damn Twitch kids. I, I wanted to bet that river, you could see. Uh, and precisely for the reasons of the hand that we showed up with. And anyway, it's, it's nice when your reads get confirmed. Uh, let's call here. Um, should we go for a donk? Quite a light donk in this river, actually. Again, very little king x, ace x in his range. Um, and so I think half pot might work, and it does. 
it's hard to call a queen and jack high, I think, comparatively. We'll jam the uh, t 10 jack. I wish we managed to squeeze in a bet with that. Uh, our hand. There's a lot of spots that we just, you know, time bent because I'm trying to explain everything. Alright, checking. Not doing anything here. Fold. Start with limp. Okay. Uh, I'll go for a bit here with the three of diamonds. Interacts a little bit with the continues. Ten of hearts is pretty meaningless. None of hearts comes. Uh, so, definitely our opponent would probably have some floats with a diamond here. Uh, I'll go for a little bet on the turn, just to basically fold out any of the back to the space, for example. He's got some kinks for sure, lots and lots of commas of king. They're not folding. And this ace, like, I'm not going to try and make a king fold. He wins. Or we chop now, by the way, we're against a jack eight of diamonds or something, which is what we're hoping to be up against. Queen eight off, okay, interesting. So, that's, um, you might think we're a bit bluffy, which we have been a bit bluffy, that's true. Uh, and we will continue to be a bit bluffy in turn spots. We're going to go for a 138 9 suited. I quite like it. It's doing it, trying to build a sample. Uh, we'll give a limp with ace three of hearts. Good flop, good flop, good flop. Uh, given that he called two streets with queen high before, I think we can go ahead and bet this one. Could check it as well sometimes, but... Um, there is an argument as well for checking because he thinks we've been quite aggressive, and so why would he think we'd give up, but... Not sure. Um... Again, going to go for a snap limp, by the way, which is interesting to see. So, like, it's typically quite polar. So, we're going to go a bit smaller with our hand. And we get a snap fold. Uh, if, you're, if you're against polar ranges, sizing down with your bluffs makes sense. And so, therefore, I would size down with some value as well. Um, but, yeah. Fold 6-2. Of course, if you're able to snap limp up, Middling hand, that's pretty good going. But it's tough to do that. We'll check here. Quick bet. Start with a call, I guess. Be very aware about our time bank. So, which we have none. Okay, check, check. Uh, quick check on the turn as well. So, I don't know if two... I mean, there is some firex certainly in this range. We'll start with a check. I hope you guys check, check. Obviously, we win. Go to the three quarter bet. He wants to bluff for seven x with a club. What do I think? I think we'll fold. I think in that spot it's quite easy to not bet a lot of your um, high cards because you feel like you might have some showdown with them, you know, because you could put your opponent just on some. 9 8 or with a club there, right? And so a lot of your 10 high plus has showdown, and therefore I think it's naturally going to be a little bit under bluffed there um, compared to the other spot, which could be naturally a bit over bluffed. But this is where you know uh, the analysis of spots comes in so useful because certain situations kind of naturally get over bluffed, not because people are bad, just because combinatorically wise poker is not uh, poker is complex like that, you know what I mean? And, and people's tendencies you probe a gut shot. For example, that's very, 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 very different on certain runouts uh, than in other spots. Um, and so here, for example, we're going to be perceived to have a lot of draws when we probe. We're still going to do it, but uh, we'd be cautious about betting the barreling. Deck is now following. Deck, deck, deck. Thank you very much. He said, "Make sure the poker show is good, or I'm going to deck you." We're going to check. All right, again, I'll check. I might go for a dub super delay here. I mean, of course, now with this hand, yes, is the answer. Um, we don't have many big, big dimes to speak of, but we have some, and I think three quarters is going to be absolutely fine. Maybe 1.3. Oh, let's go three quarters. Doesn't make too much difference. Maybe 1.3 is slightly better, because, I mean, but I don't want to prompt suspicions with a, a versus a 7x or something you know what I mean like let's just get that to fold and then move on with our lives we'll jam the 8-7 off and we get a fold which is nice we 
and we'll limit the 6.5. Okay, flop a gut shot, if I board. Um, I'm going to start with a pair. You could check some of these spots, actually, and especially at eight big blinds, but it's, yeah. It's a spot I would play against a lot of opponents. Unless, they're like, if I had reads, they were very check raise happy. But I haven't played enough of Breadline to, to have that. Like, Breadline's played fairly. This is kind of like GTO-ish reg, so, like, or or meta reg, I guess is, like, a way to, to describe it. Where, like, he's, I think, probably for a 50s, he's probably very, very solid. Um, that's not meant as a, that's meant as a compliment, not a, not a caveat criticism. Um, we'll check here. Okay, nice turn. Check, check. Don't think Breadline's too much here to call uh, a turn probe, so... Uh, we'll go for a check. He's not shown himself to be super bluff happy on runouts, but like here, not much King R and A silent range. So uh, I do hope he might take a bet. Tank check means like he's thinking about something. Maybe he's thinking about maybe a nine X or something. Uh, I might go for a min bet here. See if he wants to actually check raise with a hand like that. No, snap fold. Okay. We tried. We tried, ladies and gentlemen. Sometimes. Uh, yeah, it won't always work out. One thing to say, like if if let's say breadline was slightly under bluffy, then that definitely affects how we want to play certain uh, flop turns and rivers. So maybe for example, like checking there's less beneficial on the turn because we're just going to get slightly under bluffed, and maybe we just want to try and get some value from whatever if that if it's there. I'm not sure if I'm honest. Um, going to bet this even though could definitely not bet it, and we get snap jammed on which. It's sad times for us because we had a nice bit of equity there that would potentially lose it too. It's more of a kind of like feel like we sort of have to. Snap checks here. Which is 3.5 again. Might go, I mean, I'm tempted to go bigger, but it is a bit suspicious. Well, okay, we'll check instead. Check is not a bad idea, by the way. Let's not fold, yeah? Uh, I'm going to go for a check raise then. Let's not fold. <laughs> I mean, what do you do? I don't know what hands. I mean, 8 4, 8 3, you might lose to. But that's not only really suited versions in like 8 4 of spades. Okay. I think you probably picked up an extra blind, I think. I'm not sure. Uh, given we limped before and we limped bet folded, I think I'm happy to uh, limp 10s. Uh, we'll go for a bet here. And then obviously bet call against an 8x. Check call is scary and feels very 9x heavy because we also block a lot of the natural check calls here. So we're definitely checking the turn. Uh, possibly folding river when he jams here. We lose 6-7 is not really. I think it's just going to ja check jam rather than check call. And so I think this range is overwhelmingly 9x. The Jack X also gets there a little bit, so I mean he's got Jack 7 or something, he also wins. I'm folding, I'm folding, I'm folding. 10's blocked a lot of the bluffs, we've kind of... Uh, I mean, not really, but... And blocks value, but... Again, blockers are overstated, like, blockers are matter if there's bluffs there, but... I don't, I don't think there's bluffs there, so... We'll, we'll make the hero fold. You see how it switches around a lot, you know, hero calling spots and... Whatever, hero folding spots. Uh, run into Jack's, nice hand, so nice hand. Nothing we can redo really at six big blinds. 